Hello everyone, welcome to this revision video for our Year 7 curriculum, Did the Normans Bring a Truckload of Trouble to England? So first of all, let's just re-establish when the Norman Conquest was. So we're in here in 1066. So the Norman Conquest and the Battle of Hastings um, happened in 1066. And in the years afterwards, obviously, the Norman Conquest. And this usually uh, heralds the start of what we call the medieval period, which lasted from around about 1066 to circa, which means around 1500. So that's a reminder of uh, the time period that we're actually looking at um, within this inquiry. Uh, William I himself actually ruled from 1066 to 1087. So William I, William the Conqueror, died in the year 1087. So in this inquiry, we're looking at the quote from the historian Simon Sharma, who we can see there. Uh, and in his book, A History of Britain in the Year 2000, um, he's written about the Norman Conquest. Now, Simon Sharma, as a historian, has used sources to come up with his interpretation of the Norman Conquest. And this is where the full quote of Truckload of Trouble actually comes from. It's just worth reminding ourselves about the whole um the whole of his historical interpretation to fully understand it. So this is what he says. Historians like a quiet life and usually they get it. For the most part, history moves at a deliberate pace, working its changes subtly and incrementally. Nations and their institutions harden into shape or crumble away like sediment carried by the flow of a sluggish river. English history in particular seems the work of a temperate community, seldom shaken by convulsions. But there are moments when history is unsubtle, when change arrives in a violent rush, decisive, bloody, traumatic, as a truckload of trouble, wiping out everything that gives a culture its bearings, custom, language, law, loyalty. 1066 was one of those moments. So there's the really great words of Simon Sharma there, which we are really focusing in on in this inquiry question. So the main historical concepts as part of this revision video to really hone in on as part of your revision are knowing what the Doomsday Book was. It was a book from 1086 which listed who owned what land and resources throughout England. It's a great historical source. Um, you can actually look it up and look at your local area, maybe the village that you live in, uh, and what was happening in the Doomsday Book in 1086. The feudal system is a system where land is loaned or rented in return for soldiers. It's a hierarchical system where some people in it are more important than others. Monarchy is a king or queen of a, of a country, that institution. Monastery is a place where a community of monks lived. They lived under religious vows. Later on, monasteries would be formed like Fountains Abbey and Reaver Abbey in North Yorkshire, later on in medieval times, but they weren't there right at the start of the Norman Conquest. And a peasant is a labourer in medieval times. They worked in farming and was usually poor. So for each of these um, bits of the revision video, you need to be thinking about the key question, did the Normans bring a truckload of trouble to England? So one of the first things that we studied was, of course, the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Now, 1066 is one of those years in English history which was really, really significant and important. And it all stems from the fact that on the 5th of January 1066, King Edward the Confessor died. Four people claimed a throne, and this led to lots of battles in England in 1066. Now, the four people that claimed the throne were firstly Edgar the Atheling. He was the nephew of King Edward the Confessor, and he was only 14 years old, so he wasn't really seen as a, as a great contender to the throne. Then there was Harold Godwinson. Now, Harold Godwinson was a powerful Anglo-Saxon earl. He was actually an earl in the what we would now call southwest England in what was then known as the county of Wessex. Now, Harold Godwinson was so powerful during the rule of King Edward the Confessor. He was actually known as the Alter Rex, which means second king or other king. So he was widely expected to take the throne on the death of King Edward the Confessor. Then there was Harald Hardrada, and he was the Viking king of Norway and Denmark, and he was a feared warrior. In fact, his name means hard ruler. And then lastly, there was William, the Duke of Normandy. Now, Normandy is in northern France. William was the Duke of Normandy, but he wanted to rule England as well. And he was a powerful ruler as well. Now, there were three major battles in 1066. There was the Battle of Fulford, where Harold Hardrada and Tosti Godwinson, the brother of Harold Godwinson, defeated the English earls, the Anglo-Saxon earls, Edwin and Morcar in the Battle of Fulford. Only five days later, the Battle of Stamford Bridge took place again in Yorkshire. Harold defeated Harold, Harold Godwinson defeated Harold Hardrada and Tosti Godwinson um, at that battle. 
And then only a few weeks later, there was the Battle of Hastings. So on the 14th of October, 1066, the Normans then defeated the Anglo-Saxons at the Battle of Hastings. Now, King Harold Godwinson was killed during the battle, as shown in the Bayer Tapestry below. Not necessarily dying with an arrow in his eye. Most historians agree that he was probably hacked down by a Norman death squad. But either way you want to look at it, by the end of the 14th of October, by the end of the Battle of Hastings, Harold Godwinson was dead, and this was one of the most significant moments in English history. And I think you'll probably see that, obviously, the Normans coming over in 1066 and, and killing the English king at the Battle of Hastings is certainly a strong piece of evidence to suggest the Normans brought a truckload of trouble to England. So in our next lesson, um, in thinking about the key question, did the Normans bring a truckload of trouble? We learned about resistance to Norman rule. So we found out that William Duke of Normandy was crowned King William I of England on Christmas Day 1066. However, many Anglo-Saxons did not support Norman rule and began to resist against the conquest. In fact, on Christmas Day itself, as William was being crowned king, there was a riot outside Westminster Abbey, which his soldiers had to put down. And this, I suppose, foreshadowed um, the... Uh, rebellions and resistance that would be against Norman rule. So in terms of William, he took control of London by surrounding it and persuading the city to surrender. Um, the, one of the first rebellions came in 1067 when Edric the Wild led an attack on the city of Hereford. William stayed out of it and let the attack fade away. Now, in 1068, Gertha, the mother of Harold Godwinson, Gertha Godwinson had taken refuge in Exeter and was building an army. And William laid siege to the city for 18 days to stop a rebellion developing there. There was also another rebellion in the north in 1068. Um, Northern rebels were plotting. He went north to face them and build cat castles to demonstrate his power. But in these early years, William is not really taking on the rebels directly um, and he's allowing the resistance to kind of fade away. So we might say that this is a strong piece of evidence to suggest the Normans didn't bring a truck load of trouble. However, after rebellions in the north in 1069, when a Viking army landed and combined with English earls Edwin and Morcar, it led William to bring about the harrying of the north in the winter of 1069, uh, 1070. Now, what happened during this rebellion is this was one of the most brutal um, events of the Norman conquest. It led to the deaths of 100,000 people and the Normans burned down villages. Um, they plowed salt into the lands and they killed people and animals as well. OK, so one of the next things we learned about was Norman castles, one of the most famous things that's associated with the Normans. The Normans built castles across England after 1066 and they were used as military fortresses and often to show off Norman power. Now, they would have been feared by the Anglo-Saxons and seen as instruments of control, which is really strong evidence the Normans brought a truckload of trouble. In fact, 166 houses were demolished to build a castle at Lincoln. The building of the castle at York interfered with a local cemetery. And Norman castles are often built on top of or reused old Anglo-Saxon fortifications to really emphasise Norman power. But on the other hand, castles also brought peace and civility. They allowed towns to develop and tradespeople and craftsmen to earn money through the building of the castles and also supplying those castles and their populations. So the Norns built over a thousand castles after 1066. There's some concrete examples of those castles within the local area of Yorkshire and beyond. Durham Castle was built in 1072 to control the local area, but the castle was besieged for four days in 1080 and saw quite a degree of fighting. Of course, the Norman Earl Robert Cumin had been killed in Durham uh, before this. Pickering Castle was built in 1069 and 1070 after the hiring of the North to control the local area. And it didn't really see fighting and probably brought um, perhaps a little bit of peace and stability to that local area around the North York Moors. York Castle was originally built in 1068, but that just brought fighting. The castle was destroyed by rebels in a Viking invasion in 1069, but it was rebuilt in 1070 and from there, York mostly saw peace and stability during Norman rule. And then Richmond Castle in North Yorkshire was built after the hiring of the North by Alan the Red and Norman. Now it's really important that you understand uh, some of the main features of uh, Norman castles. They're known as Mott and Bailey castles, very well known for having things like a moat, a great hall, a drawbridge, um, a keep or a tower. Uh, the Mott is the defensive mound of earth. Um, Man-made hill, the strongest part of the castle or the safest part of the castle. The bailey is the other part of the castle, which is a large walled area where soldiers uh, and other residents of the castle would have lived. And then the palisade is the name that we give to a fence which was made out of wood. Now, early Norman castles were uh, primarily built out of wood, but they were largely then replaced and built with much stronger stone castles. 
OK, so in our next lesson, we talked about Norman society and whether Normans brought a truckload of trouble to England in terms of society. So huge changes were made to Anglo-Saxon society by the Normans. They replaced the Anglo-Saxons as the people in charge and they kept control of people through something known as the feudal system. And you can see how that system worked with the monarch right at the top of the, what is a hierarchical structure, the tenants in chief, the subtenants, and then the peasants right at the bottom. So, did the feudal system bring a truckload of trouble? Well, maybe. The feudal system benefited the most powerful in society. The king now owned all the land and got taxes and soldiers from people. However, peasants lost out and lost a lot of freedom. So, it benefited um, some people, but for the Anglo-Saxons, it definitely, I would say, brought a truckload of trouble. And it meant that the peasants ended up having a lot less freedom than perhaps they'd had before. In terms of the impact on people, well, the Normans abolished slavery. So, that's a good piece of evidence to suggest the Normans didn't bring a truckload of trouble. So those people that had been enslaved would have got a fair degree more freedom. However, women lost land to Normans or were forced to marry Normans. The Normans took nearly all land and within the peasants, there were freemen who were poor peasants who rented land and were free. But Norman rents were so high that many had to become what were known as villains. And villains were peasants who were not free and tied to the land. They had to ask permission to get married or leave their village. Now, Gertha Godwinson is a good piece of evidence. She tried to buy Harold Godwinson's body from the Normans with gold, which shows that she was obviously quite rich. She was involved in the 1068 rebellion in Exeter, uh, but she had all of her lands taken from her and she ended up leaving England forever, along with many other Anglo-Saxon widows, uh, probably for Scandinavia. So when the Normans took over, they brought in new laws and some of those laws brought a truckload of trouble and some of them maybe didn't. You can decide, obviously, for yourselves. The Murdrum Law meant an entire village could be fined if a Norman was killed and the attacker could not be found. The Forest Law punished Anglo-Saxons if they entered royal forests without permission. This stopped people being able to hunt in the forest and deprived them of an important source of food. Trial of combat was a new way of deciding if a person was guilty by making them take part in a combat. Uh, William also carried out a huge survey of land and property in 1086 called the Doomsday Book, which allowed him to charge more tax from the people of England. In fact, Norman taxes were so high that many freemen were forced to become villains, they lost their freedom. The Normans also took over almost all positions of authority. Only one in six English bishops remained in post, and Norman words entered the English language such as authority, government, royal agreement and evidence. In fact, the Normans reformed the church, helping to end corruption and bringing in laws to improve people's behaviour. So that might suggest they didn't bring a truckload of trouble. The Normans built lots of monasteries. In 1066, there were 60, but by 1135, there were 235. Monasteries often cared for and helped the poor and the sick, which is obviously quite good. So to summarise, the you might want to pause this and just kind of check some evidence for both sides of the argument um, to help you in thinking about your own opinion. So you can have a look at this uh, and pause it just to kind of help you and perhaps finish off your revision for this topic. So there you have it. You need to now think what's your final opinion on this historical question. Did the Normans bring a truckload of trouble to England in 1066 and decide whether you agree with historian Simon Sharma or not? Thank you for listening.